Welcome back to 20 Things You Must Stop Doing in Your 20s. My name is Byron Dempsey. This is part of my new series, 20 Things You Must Stop Doing in Your 20s. This is idea number three. Of course, as usual, if you're not uh, sign up to the challenge um, every fortnight or every week, depending when you sign up. You can sign up and get a fresh email from me. In that email, you get a blog post, which you can read. You can read it in the email. You also get a podcast and a YouTube video so you can watch, um, all covering one important idea. At the end of the blog post, at the end of the video and the podcast, you'll get a challenge. And that challenge is for you to do that week. That obviously collates the idea. Now, 20 weeks, I think if you committed to this, you could really change a lot in your life. And I think these ideas are really, really cool. Um, I'm thinking about turning it into a bit of a book and creating a bit of a course out of it once it's finished. Um, each idea takes me like an entire day to put together. It's a lot of work. Um, I know it's only like a th- you know 1,500 words on a blog post, but that's you know me trying to cut down 6,000 words to 1,500 to make a really concise idea as short as possible. Um, Abraham Lincoln said, I wanted to write you a short letter, but I didn't have time, so I wrote you a long one. And Einstein said, if you can't explain an idea simply, you don't understand it well enough. And we see this with academics quite a bit. There's a lot of ego in it. They write really complicated reports, but it's like simplified shows that you really understand the idea. So I put a lot of work into simplifying these blog posts, these ideas, these podcasts to be as short as possible so that you can understand them and get the biggest bang for buck. I know a lot of personal development books are like, you get the idea and then they waffle on for like 200 pages. Like they don't have to be 300 pages. Anyway, a little bit of a rant there. Um, idea number three. This is a good one. This is a very, very good one. So let's jump into it, shall we? As per usual, I love to start with a story. And this is the story of two brothers. These two brothers grew up about 18 months apart. One day their father lost his job and over time he began to turn to alcohol. Not long after, their father became a full-blown alcoholic. He would come home and beat the boy's mother in front of them. When the boys were old enough, they would stand in front of their mother and take the beating for her. One brother grew up to be just like his father, a real troublemaker at school, treated people poorly and didn't care much. He robbed the liquor store clerk at gunpoint and got sentenced to 10 years in prison. The other brother grew up much differently. He married his childhood sweetheart, got a high paying job, has beautiful kids, and by all traditional measures, he was successful. A journalist found out about the story and thought, isn't that interesting? Two brothers, two identical upbringings, yet two completely different outcomes. I wonder why this is. So she decided to sit down and interview them both. First, she went to see brother one. She arrived at a prison. She went through security, sat down in front of the glass pane. She hit record on her tape recorder and asked the brother one simple question. How, how did you turn out the way that you did? The first brother slammed his fist on the table and in anger he yelled, how could I turn out any differently with a father like that? The journalist concluded the interview and then went to see brother number two. She arrived at his home and was greeted by his children and wife. The brother got her some tea, sat her down in his living room. The journalist hit record on her tape and asked one simple question. How did you turn out the way that you did? The brother smiled, took a second, then simply answered, how could I turn out any differently with a father like that? Welcome back to 20 Things You Must Stop Doing to Crush It In Your 20s. This is idea number three, stop living below the line. So what can we learn from that story? Two brothers, the same upbringing, yet two completely different outcomes. If you imagine a ladder, and when you're born, you step on this ladder, and when you die, you step off it. In the middle of this ladder is a line, Now, whenever you make decisions in your life, you're either playing above the line or below the line. If you play above the line, you take accountability, responsibility, and ownership for your actions and your life. Between the two brothers, who do we think was more like this? The second brother, right? Now, if you live below the line, you constantly make excuses, live in denial, and blame others. Now, which of the brothers sounds more like this one? Brother number one. So you take accountability, responsibility, and ownership above the line, and you blame others, make excuses, and live in denial when you're playing below the line. If I was to ask you this question, have you spent 51% or more of your life either playing above the line or below the line, which one do you think it would be? The majority of people when we ask this question unanimously say below the line, because that's how we were raised. It's not anyone's fault, but let's take responsibility for that. Whilst brother number one saw his dad as an excuse to justify his behavior, brother number two saw it as an opportunity to be better. 
Brother One blames his father, makes excuses to justify his actions, and lives in constant denial that he could have been better. Now here is a critical point when it comes to this idea. It's not about right or wrong, it's about the outcome. It's not about right or wrong, it's about the outcome. I'm not justifying the father's behaviour. What he did was horribly wrong. But if you accept that without taking responsibility, ownership or accountability, you have no control over your life, just like brother number one. Let's take this example. The other day I saw a TikTok of a guy talking about how messed up the food industry is. He said something along the lines of this. It's messed up that we guilt the everyday person for being overweight. We emphasize how X percentage of Americans are overweight when we should be holding the massive corporations that spend millions of dollars a year making their processed food as addictive and cheap as possible. Yet for some reason we victimize the individual rather than victimizing the corporations and holding them accountable. Here's the thing about this video. I agree with what he said. We should be holding these corporations accountable. They are why so many Western countries have such high populations of obesity. It's not about right or wrong, it's about the outcome. By saying it's a corporation's fault, they are right. They are 100% correct. However, if that is their only belief, do you think they'll ever get healthier? If all they do is blame the corporations and make excuses about their weight, nothing will change. They need to ask the question, how can I take responsibility? So let's just brainstorm some ideas. If you were to stop blaming the corporations and go, how can I as an individual take responsibility for my own health? What are some of the things you could do? And this is going to be completely different depending on the person. But here are some just ball, ballpark ones I made up on the spot. Uh, bulk buy food and meal prep. Do a sugar detox so you're less addicted to sugar. Read a book about how to remove sugar addiction. There are books out there. Budget your income so you can put more money into food. If the price is an issue to you, if finding like cheap food is a lot, if finding, if you only have money for cheap food and that's really poor quality food, then budget better and figure out how you can spend more money on food. Again, depends on the situation. Research and find healthier alternatives. Go for regular runs, join a gym, etc., etc., etc. The list goes on, but you get the idea. It's not about right or wrong, it's about outcome. Ask yourself the question, how can I take responsibility for this? If you begin to take responsibility, accountability and ownership for everything you do in life, I promise you your life will change. I was presenting at Empower You the other day, a two-day program I helped run. The days go for about 12 hours each from 9 o'clock to 9 o'clock at night. And during the goal setting session, everyone was looking uninterested. I was presenting, everyone seemed to be drifting off. I could feel the energy was low. Afterwards, I told my mentor in frustration that the group had low energy. I was blaming the group. I was going, oh, this group's not that good. They've got low energy, blah, 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 blah. And a part of me craved him to sympathize with me and tell me I did a great job, but he didn't say that. Instead, he said, Byron, if their energy is low, that's your responsibility. Then he said, as soon as their energy is low, get them up for a stretch, play a quick game, do something to wake them up and take ownership for their energy. So the next time the energy was low, I brought it back. And I had been doing that ever since, and it's been incredibly effective. It's not about right or wrong, it's about outcome. It's very easy to put the blame on them because it's their energy. They're the ones who are, you know, giving me the energy. They're the ones that are there. But it's not about right or wrong, it's about the outcome. And the outcome I wanted was more energy. Most people in life make excuses and excuses. They blame the traffic, they blame politics, they blame anything they can so it isn't on them. And those people are just exhausting to be around. They suck the energy out of you. They're constantly negative and justify where they are because of external circumstances. Now again, they're probably right. Maybe the traffic was terrible, but you could have always left earlier. It's not about right or wrong, it's about the outcome. Not everything is your fault, but it becomes your responsibility. Let me repeat that. Not everything is your fault, but it becomes your responsibility. It wasn't the brother's fault that they had an abusive father, but it became their responsibility to be better. It's not your fault there's traffic, but it becomes your responsibility to leave earlier to make sure you're on time, to check the maps, whatever it is. We can do this for anything. It's not my fault the energy was low. They're big days, right? It's not my fault the energy was really low at this workshop, but it becomes my responsibility to lift it up. Carol Dweck wrote a fantastic book called Mindset. Um, she discusses a similar idea. You either have a growth mindset or a fixed mindset. Here's a quick summary of the book. The book in three sentences. Number one, skills can be cultivated through effort. Number two, people with a growth mindset thrive on challenges. Number three, the fixed mindset, I can't do it. The growth mindset, I can't do it yet.
the five big ideas of this book. Number one, the view you adopt of yourself profoundly affects how you lead your life. Number two, believing that your qualities are carved in stone is a fixed mindset, creates an urgency to prove yourself repeatedly. Number three, people in a growth mindset don't just seek challenge, they thrive on it. Number four, the growth mindset does allow people to love what they're doing and continue to love it in the face of difficulties. And number five, those with a growth mindset found success in doing their best, learning and improving. This is exactly what we find in champions. You are more than welcome to make excuses. And most of the time, those excuses are valid and true. But how do they benefit you? Because if anybody's ever done it, then you can too. You can have excuses or results, but you can't have both. And most people are full of excuses. Don't wish it was easier, wish you were better. Not everything's your fault, but it becomes your responsibility. The flower does not dream of the bee. It blossoms and the bee comes to it. You will always have problems. Learn how to enjoy life while you solve those problems. Start to take control of your life rather than sitting in the passenger seat, watching, step into the driver's seat. Stop making excuses, stop blaming others and stop living in denial. Stop living below the line and your 20s will be an awesome time. Stay young, stay driven. That is the blog post part of this episode. So that's a blog post part of this episode. Now, as usual, I just kind of want to, I guess, riff, open up some, some more ideas that I couldn't fit into that blog post or I just didn't think were um, quite as important. Um, so just a bit of a, a disclaimer. Above the line, below the line, this is one of the most impactful ideas that we've, we teach at Empower You. So at Empower You, we teach a bunch of flip charts, and this is one from Empower You. And this, out of 45 ideas, is the one biggest idea that everyone agrees has changed your life more than anything. And it's a simple mindset shift. So it's a huge one. Um, now, yeah, quick disclaimer. Of course, for the food example, right? If I take the food example, are there people on the planet who can't afford certain types of food? Yes, of course. However, chances are they're not listening to this podcast. Um, so, you know, it's very easy to be like, oh, well, that mindset only works if you're wealthy and whatnot. Well, you are wealthy if you have access to this podcast, whether you believe it or not. You know, people perceive wealth as like billionaires and really rich people, but you're probably very wealthy and probably in the top at least 5%, probably the top 1% of the world just because you have access to this podcast. So recognize that, you know, the advice that we are giving. Yes, of course, there are going to be times where, you know, there are people in poverty and this mindset doesn't really fix anything but that being said it's always going to be good to adopt this mindset like there's so many scenarios where it can help you um so i'll give another example if this didn't stick in quite yet this is an example we use and some people just i we posted this on tiktok a few times and everyone always argues it so we'll see how we go so let's give an example of the bus is late let's say you're going to school one day and the bus is 10 minutes late you rock up 10 minutes late to school you walk in what do you say to the teacher i'm so sorry miss the bus was late Okay, the teacher says, that's all right, sit down, blah, blah, blah. The next day comes along. The bus is 10 minutes late again. You walk up to school. You walk in. What do you say? I'm sorry, miss, the bus was late again. Okay, blah, 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 blah. Let's say it's Wednesday, day three, day four. It's now four days in. The bus is late yet again. When you walk in, do you still say to your teacher, I'm sorry, miss, the bus was late? Or do you say to your teacher, I'm sorry, miss, I should have been on time? I don't know. But a lot of people will still say the bus was late. Now, question, was the bus late? Yes, it's not about right or wrong, it's about outcome. By saying the bus is late, that's completely true. However, if you say the bus is late, you're no longer in control. If we were to take responsibility, accountability and ownership for that, what are some ideas we could do so we could get, get to school on time? Of course, it depends on the person and the situation, but let's say you called up the bus company and said, hey, this is a school bus, it's 10 minutes late to school. Okay, that didn't work. Okay, hey, mum, dad, can I get a lift with you guys to school? You know, oh, we, we, leave at, we leave at seven o'clock. Okay, that's all right. I'll go work in the library for two hours, catch up on some homework. Uh, I could walk to school maybe. I could get a bike. Oh, I'd have money for a bike, get a job. You know, stop making excuses. Go get a job, mow some lawns, get a bike, ride to school. Whatever it is, can you get a lift with a friend? Um, there's, so, there's infinite ideas on how you could take accountability and responsibility. The point is the bus was late. By saying the bus was late, you're completely right. But by saying the bus was late, you're giving the control to the bus. And ultimately, it's, nothing's going to get solved. If the bus is keeping, if it's going to keep being late, you're going to keep being late to school, then you're going to get detentions and it's going to you know, make it worse and worse and worse. So the bus is late. Hopefully that gave you a bit of an idea. Again, it's not about right or wrong. It's about the outcome. Um, so now this is mindset, right? This idea is not as practical 
I guess, is some of the other di- ideas I'm going to be talking about. Later on in this um, series, I've got some really practical challenges around like money and finance and goal setting and whatnot. Um, but this is, a very, you know, it's, it's early on in the series because it's so important. It's a mindset shift. And one of the most important things we can do in our life is shift our mindset. Um, I know mindset can be a little bit cheesy and like cringy, like a life coach sort of thing nowadays, but it's true. Mindset is going to switch your life very, very fast. Um, the first two ideas I spoke about, comfort zones and stopping a winner, are kind of mindset shifts as well. Um, obviously, there's practicality in them, but they're also mindset shifts. And it's crazy how much can shift just by adopting this, just by going, okay, how do I take accountability, responsibility, ownership? And then also catch yourself out. Catch yourself out when you you are saying excuses and you can hear the victim mentality happening. Because we all know people who have the biggest victim mentality. Everything they say, they complain. You rock up, the very first thing they say is, oh, how about that traffic? Oh, how about the weather lately? Oh, did you see what happened in the politics? Oh, do you see what's happening on the news? It's like, shut up. Oh my God, I just, I don't have time. I, I don't have energy to deal with these people. They suck the energy out of you. They're just always in the victim mentality. Nothing is ever their fault. It's always something out of their control. And they're just the worst people to be around. And you want to cut those people out. And if that's you, learn to catch yourself. If that's you, to catch yourself. Stop making excuses. Take responsibility. Stop making excuses and stop saying excuses for like the rest of your life. At least do it for the next week, which is going to link into my challenge for you, which I'm about to share. So if those people in your life recognize how much they suck and recognize that, you know, if that's you, change it. It's as simple as a mindset shift change. Honestly, it's as simple as that. Take responsibility. Um, And then let's ask the question, whenever you're approached, whenever something's going wrong, how do you take responsibility? If you have a team, if you manage a team, oh, they're not showing up on time. I told them to come at this time. Okay, take responsibility. How can you make sure they show up on time? Have a conversation with them. You know, make it more clear. Whatever it is in life, whatever it is, take responsibility, accountability, and ownership and ask yourself the question, how can I take responsibility, accountability, and ownership? At whatever it is, for leaders, this is so important. For leaders, if you're leading, you need to take responsibility for your group. Your team, if something's not working in your team, it's your fault. If there's, a, if there's someone in the team who's causing issues, it's your fault. You hired this person. Have a chat with them. Take re- accountability, responsibility, and ownership in everything you do, and you'll be amazed at how much your life can change. So that's my kind of little rant. Um, Your challenge this week, your challenge. I want you to reframe everything you do for one week. Take full responsibility for the entire week. You're stuck in traffic, you're frustrated, you're getting angry. Why not call your mum, your best mate or someone you're trying to catch up with? What can you do in that time? Do people arrive to your event late? That's not your fault, right? They have, you know, you said to get there at seven, but they're arriving at eight. Send out a text, an email. Make it clear that they have to be here on time. Take accountability. Try this to the most extreme 100% version for a week and see what you notice and see what you learn. Every single time you catch yourself with an excuse, mentally check it. Is this valid? Should I be making this excuse? How can I take responsibility for it? Consciously live above the line for an entire week or consciously stop living below the line, whichever way you want to frame it. Then think what worked and what didn't and adjust it based on your learnings. Here are some key points to remember. And I'd write these down, put them on your desk, write them on your wrist, on your, you know, on your hand, put them on sticky notes or whatever it is. Number one, not everything is your fault, but it becomes your responsibility. Number two, it isn't about right or wrong. It's about the outcome. And number three, don't wish it was easier wish you were better. These things are as simple as a mindset shift and you'll be amazed at the ripple effect they can have in your life when it comes to relationships, work, health, career, whatever it is. So own this challenge, do it for a week, catch yourself every time you make an excuse, every time you live below the line. Otherwise, stay young, stay driven. Everything you need is in the links below and I'll see you on the next episode.